talk about the next few meetings? I can Why do that. Okay. Just let me share my screen. Select window or screen. That one. Allow. Okay. So where are we? We're April the 24th. So can this is Lynn. bigger. Can I make that bigger? Can you zoom in? How's that? That's bigger. Great. Yeah, it's a big D. <laughs> I, I can see a screen. You can't see a screen? Just D. I can, I can see a screen. Oh, yeah. I, see a screen. I see it too. Reload your browser, Don. Reload, yeah. We'll drive into um, Victoria and go to Tim's and get my i fi from there. <laughs> okay. So in May, uh, we're all of us are just going to talk about things we learned about being locked down and seeing as they've locked us down even more now. Uh, we're stuck on our island in the Pacific. We should have learned a lot of stuff by, you know, two weeks from now. Um, Murray is going to then talk about Algol. Jim's going to talk about prototyping, which I am really looking forward to. Uh, Don is going to talk about on the, June the 26th in our last presentation for the uh, this particular fiscal year, hardware additions to automate a Raspberry Pi. And I'm guessing we probably still can't have a party in July, but maybe we can like spread ourselves out in my backyard and everybody bring a chair and we can holler at each other uh, from two meters apart. I hope. How about, how about if we if you cut up some hose and we'll just talk into the hose and hold the, the other end of the hose up to our ear? We could do tin cans and strings. <laughs> we could sit in the backyard on lawn chairs and, <clears throat> and do jitsi. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do what? Jitsi. Jitsi on, on our cell phones. Yeah. Oh, jitsi, yeah. yeah. On our cell phones. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's all I have to say there. Uh, other than... I have started, as you've probably noticed, booking for next uh, fall. Mm -hmm. So um, unless you want to hear about IPv6, my pond, or more flashy NeoPixels, um, there you go. <laughs> um, hey, make and, it in NeoPixels, Craig. <laughs> in a pond. In a pond. Yeah, waterproof, yeah. <laughs> I I do have some neopixels I'm going to stick in the pond. I just haven't quite figured out how to make them uh, waterproof. <laughs> I had a 9-volt a, a battery that was dead, came out of a smoke detector, and I took a green LED, hooked the two together, and stuck it behind the waterfall in my pond. Uh, and it sat there being a green LED for six months. Wow. So I was quite impressed. Did, did you measure the current draw with those with those clampers? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Were the no, fish floating in the yeah, pond? It. Only <laughs> works for AC. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks for the next set of meetings that we've got. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to see if we can do a, a party or, or a get together or a bring your own can and strings. This summer, it would be nice to uh, to see everybody, or at least most everybody, in in real form. Um, stay tuned, I suppose. Um, By July, everybody should have their first vaccination, anyway. Yeah, I, I well, we should throw hands. I, I my, I've had my first vaccination. Yep. Yep. Everybody who's got a hand, I can see, has their first vaccination. I, I don't get mine until Tuesday. Okay, oh. you're you're close. Yeah. So by, by July, you will have your first vaccine. Even Lucy is going to get a first vaccination in another week or two. Yeah. So. All right. With that, I'd like to uh, introduce Lynn, who uh, has, I would say, one of the best backgrounds in Jitsi. Those guitars look marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> and she is going to share with us today all sorts of displays that apparently you can connect to your Raspberry Pis and possibly other embedded devices. And so I turn it over to Lynn. Thank you. Okay. 
Thanks. Good introduction. So I'm going to talk about uh, three different projects I made with three different types of, um, of LCD displays. If you've got any questions or comments, just feel free to jump in. Um, so I'll get started. In the chat link, there's um, there's a link to the PDF version of the presentation if you wanted to download it and look at it as uh, as I go along, so you can follow along with it. So first of all, I guess I better share my screen. Okay, everybody see that? Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. So yeah, these are all LCD displays. I tried to, to get a better understanding of how they work. They're pretty complicated. Um, but it seems like they're mostly about, uh, about blocking light. And that, that makes more sense with the, with the monochrome ones. They're either sort of off or on. But then you add color to it, and it gets more complicated. But there's a, a link there um, that has more a sort of a technical description of, of what happens. And over time, they've evolved, just like every other piece of technology. You get uh, you get more for cheaper. So when you go to choose a LCD or a, a display for a project, there's a bunch of things you want to take into consideration. First of all, just like real estate space, how how much space have you got? How big do you want the thing to be? You could have power considerations. How much current? It draws something that I have had to pay attention to is what the voltage requirement for the display is, whether it'll work on five volts or whether you need 3.3 or some other some other um, other level. Most of them that I, I've looked at lately have uh, have different sort of um, different bus types, whether it's uh, SPI or I squared C, or um, I've, I've got one today that even uses a parallel. Um, parallel interface so the the um, microcontroller that you're using to control it doesn't need to have any special any special features to be able to make it work so the cpu resources um does your cpu report uh support the the interface um how much ram does it have um uh, clock speed, how much storage space. Sometimes if you've got uh, a graphic that you want to display that uh, you need to have a place to store it before you, you send it out to the display. So the CPU might have to be able to handle that. Color, ver oops, color versus monochrome. Um, some of the new color ones look really awesome. So uh, you may want to choose that unless you have some other reason to want to use monochrome and cost although the cost of these things has just come down like crazy and so there's lots of selection so to start off with the first one i ever played with was a 2 by 16 line display um they can run on five volts. They've been around a long time. And that means that there's tons of example code. So it's not hard to find someone else who has uh, already invented the wheel for you where if you want to do something. So there's lots of libraries available for whether if you want to use Arduino or you want to use a Raspberry Pi or you want to use a straight C. Say you want to use a you know a PIC microcontroller or a or just a like a plain AVR in heaven forbid assembly language or something like that. The the two by sixteen and it also comes in a four by twenty package. It doesn't need any special pins on the micro. It'll use just if you've got like four consecutive or eight consecutive data pins, you can make it work with that. So the some of the disadvantages is it does take a lot of pins. 
four or sometimes eight plus you need to be able to have a, a chip enable which you, you might tie it so that it, it's always enabled or if you, but you may not but you do need to switch it between command and data mode and we'll see that when we get to the code you also may need to to uh, read or write to the display so if you want to create your own custom little graphic thing or something you need to be able to switch that line from read to write and so the early ones that oops the early ones are monochrome only although sometimes some of the newer ones have a changeable background display you only get two lines and 16 characters and it, it's a fixed font size so they're they're like fixed pixel sized um grids on the display and if you want to make your own graphics it can be a bit challenging to figure out how to do that so here is my 16 by 2 lcd display project and there's a link in the document and the document that's got the data sheet for this display it shows you the timing that you need to do if you're if you're not using a, a predefined library you want to make sure that if you need to add a delay or or um, you need to, to toggle pins in a certain sequence to be able to make it do what you want it to do. I hope, hope that makes sense. So here's what I what I got. This is using um, a SparkFun little uh, proximity sensor and the and the 16 by 2 display. The little knob on there is for contrast dis um, to vary the contrast. So it displays the distance. Um, the CPU I used is a SparkFun breadboard. And the proximity sensor is from SparkFun also. There it is. And... I think Dave needs this addition to his hat. <laughs> It can have a little display that says, you're too close. <laughs> it, it, can you can you invert the video easily? Yeah, yeah, you could get it to flash too. Oh yeah, yeah, you, you can, you have some control over the, um, over the LCD display. One of the advantages of these, of these fixed um, LCDs is that they've got a lot of smart sort of built into the board. So they've already got the ASCII characters programmed in. They've already got some kind of limited symbols and also has the ability to do scrolling and flashing and stuff. Cool. So here's the code. I've got um, just so for, so for my own memory to see which way the pins go. Um, so the 16 pins across the top and then the, and then the display is underneath where the pins are. That just that's for my memory to remember how it goes here's what all the pins do ground five volt contrast so that this um register select that's where you're you're putting it between command mode where you're telling it where the cursor gets pointed to or if you're going to write to the to the memory and then um then there's a data mode that that uh you put that you enable to actually write the characters to the screen. And the chip enable, and then the, the data pins. You can use up to eight, but it will work with only four. And then there's a backlight that with that, that little um, pot that uh, you saw in the previous picture. Is that backlight and LED? I think so. Okay. So here's the code. This is um, this is just Arduino, um, the the usual Arduino IDE that you get. Um, hash include liquidcrystal.h. The uh, trigger pin and echo pin. That's for the proximity sensor. So it says liquid crystal LCD, and then you define which data pins and which um, which control pins you're going to use. 
So if I can scroll back to here. So the first one is RS, the second one's enable, and then the four, uh, the last four, that five, four, three, two, those are the data pins. Oops. So the trigger low and trigger high, that makes the proximity sensor start. And then the LCD part of the code is really simple. It's just LCD print because the library already takes care of everything. Super simple to use. And then it looks like that. Any questions, comments? Question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're only using four bits, does that still give you the full ASCII character set or how do you, how does that work? I guess it depends on what you mean by by full ASCII. It certainly gives you, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and and all the numbers and everything. And it, well, full, full ASCII is definitely there. Yeah, uh, I, 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 again, I've never, sorry? Two, two nibbles. Yeah, I've I've seen some of those too. Yeah, so so you can connect it up, and then and then there's a a, a serial interface that you can put in between. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I've never I've never used one of these in anything but four bit mode because usually it, it's just I'm using a you know tiny microcontroller. First one I I did was a um, an Intel eighty fifty one. So yeah, where where sort of data lines were at a premium. Yeah, I was going to ask how how does the four bits get mapped to ASCII, but it, it makes sense what George is saying that you just do two writes. Yeah. Okay. So that was the first. The, that's the the uh, sort of lowest level of uh, of screen that I played around with. I did this project mainly to be able to play with the proximity sensor because I thought that might be kind of cool to put on a robot someday, but that's a definitely future feature down the road thing. So the next one, oh, we'll get past this. The next one was a graphical LCD display. So I found one of these for sale on SparkFun and, and they're um, inexpensive, um, 84 by 48 pixels. So it's not you're not you're not confined to to ASCII characters. You're not confined to to making uh, x by y number of of little blocks. You've got the whole um, 84 by 48 to deal with. They come out of old cell phones. And they're usually about 10 bucks each. Um, it says here the driver chip is a PCD 8544. So they're there's fairly good library support for those for um, Arduino for CircuitPython. Uh, I haven't really looked at at any of the other um, possible options for that. But what I have here, is, and it, it's um, it's low power. It's got a backlight. Um, comes in a nice case. It's got metal surround to it, so it, it's fairly robust, which I kind of like. You need to pay attention to the voltage with these things. Um, so I, I've, in my project, I just use uh, 10K resistors to, to sort of bring the voltage down from what the uh, micro supplies. So in the code, which I'll get to in a sec, but what have the the zero x zero x five f zero zero zero? I wanted to figure out how to make my own characters. So to convert these the zero x zero x five f those are hexadecimal. If you're not familiar with that, um, 
the five is zero one zero one and f is one 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 so if you write all those out and you sort of mentally turn that 90 degrees you can you can see an exclamation mark there <laughs> so so that's how that's how you can kind of map your own uh, you know, kind of make your own character, make your own whatever it is. This is in in a five by eight grid, but it doesn't have to be a five by eight grid. It could be it, it could be anything you want. When I turn it ninety degrees, it looks like the letter I. You turn it the wrong way. Oh yeah, yeah the yeah. other ninety. Yeah, it's yeah, got to go ninety yeah. degrees counterclockwise. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seven. Yeah. So, so for I, I did this weather station project, and I wanted to make my own homemade degrees sign. So, so uh, I came up with uh, 00070507000. So, there's um. If if you turn this one ninety degrees counterclockwise, you can see it makes a little a little box thing that's going to look like a degree sign. So this is this is what the project ended up looking like. So you can see the the um, resistors there to to um, limit the voltage going into the display. Just a standard Arduino Uno, and uh, and one of my favorite sensors, the BME two hundred and eighty, which is a um, temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure sensor. It's kind of fun to play with. And here's the code. So it's a it's a Nokia thirty one ten display, and so these are available on SparkFun and Adafruit, uh, probably a bunch of other places too. These are BME two eighty and a standard Arduino. So there's the pinouts for the for the BME two eighty, and then the pinouts for the the thirty one ten. That's right. Yes, yeah, yeah. They're, so they're they're pulled out of old cell phones. So there, there's a comment on one of the sites. You, you'll never find a new one. So they might have scratches on them or, or whatever. But um, but they're they're inexpensive and they're fun to play with. So when you when you want to code this, uh, there's a th those are the steps. The LCD that you initialize. The display, clear it, set the cursor where you want it to be. Uh, the code I have takes uh, you uh, define a string, pass it to a character, a print character function. The character function goes to LCD write, and then the LCD write function puts the the uh, screen into write mode, finds the symbol in a in an array. And then writes, takes those bits um, and sends them out to the to the display. This code um, doesn't really use a library for the display, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff in it. So there's the pin definitions. Um, SE is what? We'll be here somewhere. The reset, the pin DC, that's whether where you're in. Oh, the SE would be would be chip enabled. Reset DC is whether you're in whether you're in data mode or command mode. So you're switching between whether you're whether you're placing the cursor or clearing the screen. That's a, that would be a command mode. And data is where it's accepting um, bits to to actually place on the screen. And there's a clock and uh, it takes 3.3 .3 volts. So that pin, the 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 LCD command pin. If it's low, it's in command mode, and if it's high, it's in data mode. That's all that means. So these are the ASCII characters. And it goes on and on and on and on. 
So it starts at, if you start at 20, now here, I'll, I'll show it in the code to make more sense maybe. It, it, it is it is now yeah I started playing with this this is quite a I did I started this quite a long time ago well well but but others have gone before me right and I, and I'm sorry I don't um I don't remember where I got all this from I, but but I didn't come up with all of this on my own for sure but this um where it says that 60, the degrees map to the back tick this is my uh, this is my degree sign for the for the display. And here's the the functions I talked about: the uh, write a character, clear the screen, initialize the display, takes a string pointer, write the bits, go to X Y. Initialize. So when when it, so after all after all of this stuff, basically all you're doing is the LCD string. You send it whatever data you want, and it going through those those layers of functions. It writes it to the screen. Any any questions so far about this? Questions, so comments, anything? So your your map your your characters that you were going through earlier. Yes, so right. Just mapped as a, as an array pointer, or how, how did how, I'm trying to understand how I take an A that I want to print and map that to that chunk of memory. Right, right, right. Where was that? Like, is it as simple as you've mapped it into the? 20 hex location where an A is located in the ASCII. Yeah, so so the, the the offset to the to the characters there um if you add if you add 20 to the numbers on that list, you get the actual ASCII character code. Okay, I see. All right. And That's then great. and then they're just they're they're in the they're in the ASCII character code order so when when you type a like quote a it knows that a is a whatever the ascii representation of that is a sure. a is, is up like 41 yeah okay got it yeah so here here is the in this lcd right this uh character with the with the in, with the mining that subtracting that zero x twenty that's that that that's that offset to make it an actual ASCII character code. Does that does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay. And the rest of it is the the actual uh, the the BME two eighty does its thing, and then all I have to do, like I said call lcd string with the with the string you want to write and it sends it out and then the go to xy um, positions the cursor in the next place that you want it to be in did you find that that bme chip was like did you compare it to you know um, <clears throat> some weather station online or something like that and see just how close it got to those values yeah, I, I'm really fortunate is that I'm about two or three blocks away from uh, the uh, like Environment Canada weather station at the Ian Stewart complex, which is at the corner of Gordon Head and Mackenzie. So the, the barometric pressure is pretty close. It's not it's not exact. Um, and there's an offset that um, you're supposed to compare it to what the actual barometric pressure is at sea level, and I use the I use the um, Weather Canada information from Kelp Reef, which is of course at sea level because it's a marine buoy, and uh, like I said, it's pretty close, but it's kind of fun to play with. And, and did you find any way to record this data? 
Not yet. That's a future feature. Um, right. Yeah, that once I once I get that going, that might be a whole different uh, a whole different presentation. But I've been, yeah. Anyway, no, I would like to be able to do that, but um, I'm still working on it. So this is what it looks like when it's done. The weather info, you get the temperature, and there's my little degree sign, um, the relative humidity, and the barometric pressure. That's what you get, and it's got little LED backlight and stuff. Okay. Cool. Right. So, so this was really fun to play with, but then um, I found oh, I'd like to have more real estate. I'd like to be able to have symbols and pictures and color would be really cool. So I started to play with color TFT displays. So from Adafruit, I got a bunch of um, of these little little um, TFT IPS displays. They're bright, colorful, power efficient, um, really nice color. So the 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 TFT part is thin film transistor, which uses a uh, like a. a The transistors have some kind of way of, of doing some perpendicular thing to block light or let light through. And then the IPS doesn't do it perpendicularly, it, it's parallel, but then it becomes complicated for me to understand. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> but this is going to be more about just, just how to actually work with this stuff. Now, to make these really nice, pretty little things work, it, the code is more complicated. It's, uh, it, it's not just a simple matter of, you know, uh, set it up and write to the screen. So this is uh, Weather Station Project 2.0, which I used uh, examples and code and libraries from the from CircuitPython, which was created by the very nice people at Adafruit, is the uh, Mu as the IDE. Oops, and the Adafruit's Display I/O library, and they've got lots of really good examples and and um, different ideas for projects on their uh, on the Adafruit site. The microcontroller I used is a SAMD51, one of my favorites. It's just got a ton of power, a ton of storage, and then the actual uh, board itself has got has got extra storage on it, and use the same BME as before. Oops. The display is a uh, 240 by 320 pixels. It uses an ST7789 driver, and it's two inches across. And how to make it work? There's a whole bunch of steps. So importing the driver, define the display, define the resolution, give it a starting point, set the font. The, the way it works is when you're sending something to the display, and this is within the display I.O. library that, uh, that, that Adafruit has, you're, you're writing the, the the stuff to the screen, um, it's the it's the group that gets sent to the screen. So you you define a group, and then you can add things. You can add a, a tile to the group. You can add a a label to the group to make text, a background image, and and I show all this stuff in a sec. So we have a we have a font file because there's no. There's no built-in um, there's no built-in information in the screen. It's just it, it's just a screen. So you have to tell it you have to tell it everything. And so here is what it ends up looking like. So this is um this is a, a Grand Central M4. This is the um, SAMD fifty one board. 
there's the BME, and that's what we end up looking like. So it's got the it's got the font, the different fonts, different the fonts can be in different colors, a background image, and um, the different um, different text labels. Have a look at the code. Oh, for this, no. I mean, this this will this will run on a on an Arduino, but uh, just uh, the um, the seventy fifty one is just just the one I used because I like the I, I like to work in Circuit Python and I like the uh, I like their libraries. So is that why you choose uh, SAMD? Yeah, basically, I just want to have lots of options. And, and like, especially with the Grand Central, you've got, you got, you have so many data pins. You have, if you want to use, say, you know, multiple SPI or I squared C devices, they've got lots of, uh, lots of options to be able to, to kind of mix and match those things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the Pico has got, um, it, it's like a dual core M0. So, and the, the SAMD51 is a single core M4. So the, it'd be interesting to kind of compare the two to see the differences in performance. There's a good idea for an opportunity. Yeah. But yeah, the the um, the Pico certainly could. Uh, you you could use Circuit Python with that, yeah. So here's all the. Do you think it would work with an ESP thirty two? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It, anything that, uh, well, ESP thirty two has got lots of uh, support from Circuit Python, so yeah, that would work. Okay. Yeah. So here's the the wiring for the ST7789 and the BME280. So the BME280 uses I squared C and the ST7789 I'm using um, SPI. Just I found it easier to to have them using separate uh, separate schemes but theoretically you could you have them both on one or the other so we've got all kinds of good libraries available the board display io that this is the display io is the is the the workhorse for the uh, graphical display stuff so we import it we define a text label set up the spi So you have your you have your uh, command pin chip select reset and then the the SPI um, that's on board the um, the metro and it's 320 by 240. I'm rotating it 90 degrees because that that that's how I wanted it to be. So you create a display group and that display show. So that 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 sends a display group to the screen. So that's what's going to get displayed. And then the background image gets mapped to a tile. And then that tile gets sent to the display by doing the my display append. So the my display is the group. And the 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 background tile gets appended to that group. And that, that's how the display gets updated. A bunch of BME two eighty stuff. Now we're into into the text um, sending text to the screen. So the text um, you make labels, and the labels have. Um, 
the labels get a, a, a size, they get um, a variable assigned to them. And then, then that label gets appended to the display group. And so I had to make a label for each of the each each of the the things I wanted to display. So there's a there's the title, there's the humidity, the temp the temperature, and the and the pressure. So all these all these things um, get appended to the uh, to the display group. So here's here's a my display append the, the humidity label. My display append the temperature label. Altitude, altitude is kind of a, I don't think it's very accurate, but it's there anyway. And so that's what it ends up looking like. The, the, once the label gets added to the screen, that label has got a um, has got variables built into it. And if you update those variables, you don't have to resend the label to the screen. It, it, it's like um, it's connected somehow. So it, it automatically updates. You don't have to, you don't have to reappend anything. So is, is it because the screen is doing some sort of refresh and rereading your memory and your labels have just updated that memory? The, the the code updates the the those variables and then when the 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 variable that's assigned to the label gets updated it automatically it automatically changes and I, I, for what mechanism it uses behind the scenes I don't know I was just wondering if it was like a, a, a memory map that was happening behind this in, in the processor itself or the processor's memory and and the labels were just updating the, that memory map. The the code has got the has got the the variable defined. And right. then and then Okay. It, then that that variable that variable gets updated. Um, that so if you just change the value of that variable, then then this value on the screen changes. Yeah, yeah. You That's don't nice. need to, you don't need to do anything more. And I'm, I'm presuming the library takes care of that somehow, but uh, I don't know. So that display must need continual updating. It's it's sort of a solid state CRT in many ways. So you're continually writing to that to maintain the stuff on the screen anyway. It would certainly have to be have to be refreshed regularly. Which means their um, library presumably says, okay, well, what's what's the latest that we have to say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there have to be some. There have to be something like that. And there, those libraries are uh, they are open source. You can download um, all of the all of the bits and pieces and and have a look at them um, from the. We never like, do, do we? <laughs> from. I don't think so. I don't think so. And if, if it does, it would only be just enough to, to kind of, I don't know, keep it alive or let it do its thing. So that's, yeah, that's my presentation. Um, any comments or questions? I have a question. Yeah. I believe we bought one of these TFT displays a while ago. And unfortunately, the first one that arrived was cracked down the middle, but it still mm. worked. Mm -hmm. um, and then they sent us a new one, and I didn't play with it. I, I did play a little bit. And I thought the one that I had was a touch screen. Do you know if they actually do a touch screen? Like, I, it seemed to me you could, you know, run your finger and it would follow your finger and put a mark on the screen yeah, like everything. yeah they they do they do have ones that are touch screen yeah the the bigger ones all seem to have the touch screen so if you get past about uh, about two and a half inches diagonally like they make a they make a three and a half inch one um 
there's a bunch of different different sizes of things but yeah um if you go to the the adafruit site they see the pictures of these things you'll see someone with their with their finger uh you know making a little heart or making a little design right you know to to indicate that it is a touch screen yeah right yeah i think that's this is this, this is two inches diagonal So how did you get the cloud pattern? Was that just something you found somewhere or? Ah. For the background. Yeah, so I found the picture of the clouds and then uh, I took it into GIMP because it has to be, it has to be 320 by two, or it has to be the, the specific size, the 240 by 320 pixels. And there's also a trick with the with the bit mapping. Um, it has to be a, if I remember correctly, it has to be like an indexed bitmap. So it was a bit a bit tricky to do the converting of a just a regular JPEG image, which is what this one started out as, and right. to get it to be just right for the screen. Right. But once I did that, all I have to do is uh, save it to the to the Circuit Python drive. When you plug the Metro in to a computer, the the it comes up as a as a teeny little uh, portable hard drive, mm -hmm. and then you write the you write the Python code to that little hard drive. Right. So I I, I load the uh, I save that that picture onto that hard drive. Uh, the um the the uh, font works the same way. You have to download the font files and then. Uh, save them onto the onto that little um, that little circuit Python hard drive, right? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, that's a good question. And is that is that a, also tied to a label so you could change the background? You you could change the background. It's not tied to a label. It's tied to something called a tile grid. So you okay. have you can have you can have tile grids um, within the display group, and so so people have used these things to make you know teeny little video games. There there's a cute little one that that uh, Adafruit has. It's um it's it's a like a little uh, a little um, chip circuit chip thing that that you know shoots out. Um, shoots out rays to to destroy aliens so um the the images can move around on the screen using these using these tiles okay i don't know if it would do straight on animation very well but it but this game is sort of more like a kind of stop motion but really fast right yeah no like a good good 80s game yeah 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 right yeah, I was just thinking you could put, you know, like sunshine in your little weather station if it was going to be sunny. Or... Oh, oh, yeah, that's that. That's the idea. Um, I've been looking into pulling off um, JSON data from Environment Canada to be able to, uh, you know, see what the current conditions are because they have they have uh, they have symbols and uh, and information within the JSON to say whether the current condition is you know mainly sunny, so I could have a you know sunshine in the background. Um, if it's you know rainy, then I've I've, I've already downloaded um, and converted pictures of of you know rain and clouds and and things. But uh, I want to first of all get it going with a database to be able to track the changes over time. Right. And so for that, I'm starting to look at uh, at Flask and um, and using a an ESP32 Wi-Fi coprocessor with the with the Sandy 51, but that's a whole other story. Great. And then you can run uh, uh, NAT64 and access it from your V6 only network. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you could stuff it into Node Red and graph it all. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if I was uh, if I was interested in in that, yeah, um, I think I'm I'm going to stick with just uh, just Python right now. Um, we'll see how it goes. So this temperature is obviously inside the house. It's not yes. uh, an outdoor yes. uh, temperature, though the humidity and the pressure is you've got clouds there, so it's slightly low. It, uh, it looks all appropriate. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, so so right now the code doesn't change the doesn't change the background. It, the background is always the the blue sky with a few clouds. so it's 
Right. Because that's how we want to see the world. That's how we want to see the world. Yeah. Lynn, is that uh, is, is that uh, pressure or, or this display live right now? No, no. Um, let me stop sharing my screen. Stop. Oh, I did stop sharing. Hey, all right, you're back. So here. Da, da, da. And it makes the there it is. Oh, just a sec. I have to move the how's that tilt? Yeah, there. There, there we go. Yeah, it's backwards, but that's that's live. Yeah. No. What is it giving you for our pressure today? At the moment, it says 100.5 kilopascals. Yeah, it's pouring rain here. Yeah. Oh, there's a little bit of a little bit of brightness out there. Humidity 48.1. I I just have blue sky with clouds here. I wouldn't call it pouring rain. <laughs> it live, is I here. Like, I live only a hundred kilometers or only a kilometer or two away from you. And it's uh, actually not even, it's not even making the puddles dribble. There's nothing. Uh, oh, one or two here it is. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Now, what you need is a little accelerometer to detect when you tap on the screen, and then it will change. You can note whether it goes up or down. <laughs> like the old traditional barometer. Precisely. Oh, yeah. I, I have one of those on, uh, on above my fireplace. It's, yeah, it's like you tap, tap, tap. That was my dad's morning routine. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I, this guy, yeah, I kind of went, I, I kind of went a bit nuts with these things. That's, that's the. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Lynn, have you played with uh, with the OLED displays at all? With the cheap OLED displays? No, I haven't. No, um, no, just the just just the TFT and the um, and these IPS ones. I played with the OLED displays on the ESPs and, and a little mm -hmm. bit on the uh, on the Pico, mm -hmm. and they're really easy. The support on the Pico is still pretty limited, but. Uh, the ESPs, uh, lots of support. Mm, yeah. And they're cheap, they're like three bucks a piece sort of thing. Wow. How would you compare that to the IPS displays? Because the IPS displays are pretty nice. Um, I have no comparison, so. Hmm. Okay. So one of us will have to get one and uh, try them side by side. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if this if I can hold this thing still enough. Is that is that the OLED deed? That's an OLED display, yeah. Is it is it color or does it or is it a monochrome? This, you can get them in, in two color, like oh yeah. But, but no, they're not full color. This particular white one blue. is white. Uh, but you can get yellow and and uh, and and white, and so you can mm -hmm. highlight stuff. Yeah. Okay. But no, there's no color for them. But the nice thing about the OLED display is it's providing its own light. Mm, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's probably a little more power efficient. Yeah. Uh, and 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 really cheap, but but 
not high resolution by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. So, so what kind of resolution does it have? Like for... Oh, I would say, I don't know. Let, let me go see if I can look it up here. Uh, well, I'm sorting this out. Uh, but the advantage of the IPS or, or TFT is that if you have light already in your room, then you can you don't need a backlight, right? Yeah. Uh, 128 by 64. Mm. For, for, uh, for that, that one you've got, though, that's pretty small. So that, that resolution is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, at 0.96 inches. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're really small and, and say they, they run between two bucks to three bucks Canadian, depending. This is from AliExpress. Yeah. Uh, Adafruit probably would sell them to you for a bit more. Um, and you might get them a bit f faster. But. Indeed, I have found that uh, the different China outfits uh, are cloning those things, or some are more reliable than others. Well, that's my experience too, with with almost all the stuff that I get from China. It's like, like I've got a uh, a BMA two eighty, supposedly mm -hmm. exactly the same as what you've got, Lynn. Yeah. Except it says it is, but it isn't. Oh, it does yeah. temperature and hum uh, temperature and pressure quite reliably, but not humidity. Oh, oh. But they say it does, but it mm. doesn't. Yeah. But it was a buck too. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the the decent ones are ten bucks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean I had a I had a, an L C D display come DOA from from Adafruit and they sent me a new one, no problem. So That supports them. They do lots of really cool work. A uh, couple of weeks. No, so so I only ever get them to ship by uh, U.S. Postal Service, um, which is the most likely to avoid having to pay duty and stuff like that. It just comes through my door through Canada Post. And they can put it in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> DigiKey Canada stocks a lot of Adafruit stuff. Yeah. You, you yeah. can get it without having to bother oh, with that. Yeah. And, and so and so does BC Robotics and mm -hmm. Hey, it's almost nice. What do you got against the Squamal? <laughs> but is, is the shipping uh, still you like live there for bucks? one thing? <laughs> is shipping still a flat eight bucks, and you get it the next day? That's, yeah, yeah. And who are you talking about, George? Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks so much, Lynn. That was a really good presentation. Oh, well. Thank hey, well, you, Lynn. Um, just, I was afraid it would be kind of 